Hey friends, how's it going? It's Michael Parker and welcome back to another episode of Michael Parker Media. Today we have a show, it's really interesting to me, it's a show in some respects of hopefulness. We have the story of a man, he had it all, he lost it all due to a disabling addiction to drugs and eventual descent into mental health issues, eventually homelessness. That man is our guest today, Tom Matt, but today he's 11 years sober. He's rebuilt his life, his family relationships. He has learned to live with an extraordinary mental ability that he calls upside. So he's going to explain to you what that looks like in just a minute. But it's experienced, it's it's mentioned as being being able to see beyond 3D. He experiences 4D images with his eyes open or closed. And this makes me, he also has had contact with non-human intelligence, which we're going to also discuss. But this made me think, I've been thinking about Tom and his ability a lot this past week. The question that I'm ultimately trying to figure out, and he may have the answer, is Tom's ability for upside holographic vision, is this an evolutionary mutational upgrade? Is it a latent ability that has been awoken in him and others may have it as well? Is it a gift Is a, or a modification from NHI, or is this condition something like synesthesia or migraine auras, something that we know a little bit about, but we're still learning about? Anyway, Tom, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Michael. Glad I, to be. Let me, can I start off by describing what these upside visions look like? That was going to be my first question. You read my mind. Okay, good. So uh, upside vision is the ability to see and interact with these holographic images that are everywhere around me. I say me, but around us. All I need to do is shift my attention, soften my eyes, maybe if it's on a wall, or even I can even close my eyes and do it. And something will be there, right? Whether it might be there because we're talking about this, it could in fact be, let's say an evolutionary, so, so let's say it could be, you know, that famous evolutionary poster about the, the man walking upright. Let's say it's something yes. like that. Yeah. Or because we're talking about it, it could just as easily be two kids on the beach throwing a Frisbee. May not have to do with it. Now, so I see it, I'm like, now, once I've engaged with this, I can influence it. I can influence it with a thought. So let's say I see two kids on the uh, beach throwing a Frisbee. I can think, huh, make them throw a football. Frisbee turns into a football. I can make a giant shark come out of the water and devour both, both children. That would be monstrous, but I could do that. It's crazy. You can use, so it is both external, right? It starts externally, and then there's an internal component. It is a physiological, something with my physiology. Now, the reason we know that it is outside of me Actually, let me pause here and let, let me say something about this too. Because a lot of people like there might be a tumor or there might be something wrong with his brain. And you said I had a mental health issues and I did. 11 years ago when I went through this and I came out of this um, mental health crisis and I wrote about this in a book called Jesus Goes to Hollywood, A Memoir of Madness. It's kind of the backstory around this. But when I came out of it and I had this ability, my first thought was other than I have to get sober or nobody is going to take this serious. The second thing was, okay, Okay, there's a tumor, there's a lesion, there's something pressing against my brain, making, giving me this ability. And even though I have this crazy, amazing gift, it's going to come with a curse. So naturally, I got two MRIs. There was no lesion, tumor, no damage for drug use, nothing. So it was all clear, right? So very happy about that. So I wanted to get that out of the way because I'm sure there's people thinking there might be something going on there. Okay, so now... Once I engage with this image, I can change it with a thought, and we know it's outside my body for a few reasons. Number one, my eyes are fatigued when I do it the same way your eyes are fatigued from watching a movie or reading or anything else. Number two, that my pupils will dilate from an external response, like something arousing or exciting. We cannot willfully dilate our pupils, right? It has to be done with an external stimuli. And, and, and along that line, when you follow, let's say I'm looking at what would be considered a blank wall and I see a cheetah running across the savanna, when you follow it, right, your eye, you have a smooth pursuit eye movement and your eye will follow it. If you're faking that, for lack of another thing, your eye jumps. So they know there's something there. 
But even with that, though, right, once I've engaged with it, I obviously clearly I have an influence of it once it's engaged, because once I've engaged, I can make I can literally make a cheetah say, think, turn and come towards me and it comes towards me. So we are still when I say we I'm working with the scientists, a scientific team at the Ions Noetics Institute. And I was up there last year. We did some EEG measurements, we did some testing, and we could talk about that in a minute, yeah. exactly what it was. We're still trying to figure out what this is. And to your point, do I have an answer? You you gave three possibilities. I am still, I could be any one of those, and we can touch on each of them. I think it's a little evolutionary. Yeah, I certainly do believe that. You have mentioned this in other interviews. Now, for the people watching the video, I am going to be placing some images from Tom's uh, press packets and things that depict this. For the people who are listening to the podcast, you have made the analogy to a couple of movies. I'll let you tell it so they can kind of picture what it is you're seeing because you mentioned Iron Man, Queen's Gambit, explain that. Okay, that's great. Thank you for that reference. First of all, let, let's talk about what upside vision is not. It is not a vivid mind's eye. OK, so if you if I was looking at a poster, we all look at a poster. We know how our eyes work with that. When if I'm driving a car and you're a passenger and you say, hey, remember the Jaws poster when we were kids? I could still drive that car and think about that Jaws poster and would not worry anything about my mobility or b ability to pay attention on the road. If you said, Tom, can you see the Jaws poster using upside vision? There's no way I could drive the car. OK, I cannot do engage any motor activity. I could do it as a passenger. I could do it in a moving vehicle, but I can't drive the car and use upside vision. OK, so now what does it look like? Yeah, I use two examples because hopefully, hopefully, if someone hasn't seen one of the movies or TV shows, they've seen the other. One. Mm -hmm. So The Queen's Gambit came out a few years ago on Netflix. In that movie, there's a scene where the protagonist is laying on the bed and she is looking up at the ceiling and the chess pieces appear. Right. And she moves them with her mind. She thinks about all the moves she's going to make against her challenger in the next match. That's a great example. Most people know an Iron Man movie. Tony Stark has this AI in his office where the holographic universe, there's a famous, you know, a scene you see a lot where it's all around him. It literally looks that like that. And it's that immersive. Now, to be clear, they're usually clear with a one color tint. Right. They're clear. They're not full color like in the Star Wars movie when Princess Leia is projected outside of R2-D2. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, it's not full color like that, that I've actually seen a few times, but I cannot happen so fast. I haven't been able to engage with it. So they're typically one color. They're absolutely detailed, like unimaginably be detailed. You could see the skeletal system of a human body. You could see a circulatory system, anything you can imagine, a cutaway of a car. Yeah, so this is extraordinary. Now, even though, even though it's that detailed, it can also show me complete nonsense. Anybody would ha that would be able to do this would think it was a psi ability, some kind of psychic ability. And I promise you, if you don't don't think you would do this, you would. You're like, wait, maybe I can win a horse race. <laughs> maybe of course, it's gonna, it's gonna predict the Kentucky Derby. So. I will watch a Kentucky Derby in holographic form, right? And the race, it will show a race and it will not, it will not help that at all. In fact, I stopped trying that a long time ago because it has no, there's no upside of that. And I and I've thought about this a lot. Maybe that could be dangerous. Maybe that's not helpful, even though you think it might be to whatever this is. So that ability is not so good. Now, that said, sometimes I'll see in upside. I will see like a bridge collapse, like we just saw this morning, last night. I was going to ask you about that. Yes. And a couple hours later, a bridge will collapse. I will literally see that happen. Did that but happen to you within the last 24, 48 hours? Did no, it has not. It okay. actually did. I actually, I talked about this on Twitter about two years ago where it was a bridge collapse, but it was a smaller one in like Ohio or something, mm -hmm. which is weird that we're bringing this up today. But it will show me something as inane as a, a shopping cart hitting me in the ankle. Like I'll see a shopper cart hitting my wheel. And I've said this one a lot because it's so funny to me. I don't know why this one sticks with me. The next day, a woman hits me with a shopping cart and she apologizes. I'm like, well, that was a weird, inane, not helpful pre -cog thing. Now, as that will happen, those are two examples, I will see 20 things that never happen, right? Or I don't know if they happen. I don't, I don't know how to access it. I can't, I can't use this as anything helpful like that. So I think, I, you know, I, that's one trip you can go down or one research. Another one is like telepathy. Another one is remote viewing. I play in all those places. 
But that's the next step. Finding out what this is, is so much more important, I think, and seeing where this is and where these where these I'll call them waves or some kind of waves, wherever they're coming from, maybe maybe we could triangulate them back to their source. My wife thinks it's coming from my DNA. That's a good response. I think it's part of the matrix. I I call I call it a hidden biosphere. I call it the organic metaverse, mm -hmm. right? I know it's there and I know it's real. I know I can see it. And I think more people are evolving into it. I absolutely do believe that. When you say that you can't use it in a precognitive, like you couldn't pick lottery numbers or a winning horse, but you will have this sensation of, of the squeaky wheel on the shopping cart trolley and the next day a woman hits your foot. It almost feels like to me, and this is pure speculation, it almost feels like this ability is a protective mechanism for you in some way. And the other thing that interests me is when I think about, I've done a lot of kind of research and, and work with psychics in the past. So when they have this thought or are remote viewing, it seems to me, I'm not saying I'm psychic, I don't know, but it seems to me they have these pictures within their mind, right? Your pictures are actually externally printed on the world in front of you. 100%. I could see it, right? If we could develop some type kind of technology that we could tune it in, that would be amazing. Now, I don't even know how to begin because I don't think it's the electromagnetic spectrum, which is what I thought. And let me tell you why I don't think it is. Because if you've had an MRI, you know you're in a gigantic spinning yep. magnet. And, 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 and logically... I'm like, okay, it's not going to work in here because I thought that's what it was. It's not going to work because this magnet is going to rip out whatever it's going to, whatever electromagnetic waves are clearly not stronger than this gigantic magnet. And it wasn't going to work. It's not true. It did work. It was business as usual. So that got me thinking, well, gravity is not influenced by magnets and we can't see dark matter because it's not picked up by the, that's why it's called dark matter. So I have this hypothesis. It might be related to dark matter, dark energy and gravity. But again, it's a hypothesis. And we, my point is we don't have the technology to test it. So as cool as that would be to create something that could see it, I think it's a long way off. I think it might be easier to find other people with this ability and for us to get in the same room and see if we can, in fact, both see the exact same thing, right? If we, if it is out there, we see it. That's the game changer. You actually, when you're recovering and, and getting better, you had a couple of MRIs because a lot of people, the first thing they're going to say, well, he had issues with drugs at some, at some point and, and mental illness. So how do we know this isn't some remaining situation? But you had MRIs. You saw doctors, they found no lesions, they found no scarring, no broken no blood vessels. I mean, no. you have no discernible no. brain damage from, from drug use. No, absolutely not, not a thing. Now, and so even with that, I'm like, clinicians, okay, so we know this is true. Tell me what's up. They're, they don't have answers. Their answers are, listen, something opened in your brain, right? Something is connected in ways and it stayed open and we don't know what it is. I mean, again, I, I, I learned within a year the clinicians were not going to be helpful. So then I started emailing academics. And it's not a hallucination. Technically, hallucination is something you see and you think it's real. I know it's not real, but I did research on hallucinations. I did research with emailed neuroscientists. Finally, Dean Radin at the IONS Institute a year and a half ago, he's like, okay, you know what? I'll talk to my scientific team. We'll get in touch. Maybe it makes sense for you to come out here. And that's what I did last year. And the reason we're talking is because there's a scientific paper that's going to be coming out proving with evidence that this is happening. Now, I say proving with evidence. What we did is we measured the EEG waves in my brain while I was doing upside. Do you want me to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, I'm going to remind um, our listeners. So IONS is the Institute of Noetic Science. It was co-founded by Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell. I, what is it? San Francisco, I believe is where it's at. Yes, or is, yep. Okay. And um, this is a very interesting institute because you mentioned that you went looking for assistance within the scientific and academic community, and they didn't really know what to do with you. You And luckily you get in touch with Dean Radin. He does these studies. And I'll be honest, I tried to read the paper. It was a little over my head. But one of the things that I noticed is they say the individual perceives this phenomena as different from memory, 
imagination or hallucination. You had these significant differences in EEG brain measures during the laboratory experiments. So you take it from there. Yeah. So the 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 guy that runs the study, the EEG, he's done over 160 of these um, EEG testing. He's like the the Mozart of EEG testing, right? And he said the results were unambiguous. And if if you look at the paper, you will see that it's unambiguous. So let me tell you what it was we did, so people can understand. I would see they they would show me a picture. Let's say a picture would come up on a screen of the Eiffel Tower, right? Then I would have to think about the Eiffel Tower. Just think about it, memory, memory of it. It would go away. Then they would bring up the Eiffel Tower and I would have to see it with upside vision. So we did 200 of these random tests of different objects that I had to see with memory, you know, or not see, think about with memory and then see with upside. Now, the results were unambiguous across all brain states, alpha, theta, all of them. It was most unambiguous um, around the alpha wave state. Now, what's interesting to me about that, extremely interesting, because if I would have put money that the theta brain state was going to be the one, because that's the one mediums have, that's the one you're in the dream state kind of is active. Um, and there was, don't get me wrong, there was a difference. But if you look at the a paper, the alpha wave state uh, that was just like Rudolph's nose, for lack of another word, except it's blue. The way they represent it is not red, it's blue. Now, the alpha brain state is the brain state we are in when we are relaxed and calm and not thinking. So they write about this again. You talk about above your pay grade. I, I same, same for me. You know, basically they're saying the area is suppressing something perhaps and something else is getting through or it's suppressing something so I can see something else. I know that's kind of mumbo jumbo, but read the paper and you'll see it. Something is happening that should not be happening or it's unusual that's happening because my brain, in essence, my brain is in fact not relaxed in that state. It's right. not during that. It is in the alpha brain state, but my brain is not relaxed as we typically think of it while I'm using upside. There you go. That's a good cutaway. There's and people. to to reiterate, you can do this at will. I mean, as we're speaking right now, you could go into this state and still communicate with me. Yeah, for sure. You don't get like precognitive messages or things in those types of a physics sense, but you have this extra ability that when I was first listening to your interviews, I was beginning to think about like porpoise and, and bats and all of these animals that use different types of sensory orientation issues. I don't know if that. That's a good, actually, that's a really good analogy. So when I started researching this, when it first happened, I came upon the word umwelt. It's it's German. You, and the umwelt is way ab, uh, the way a biological organism moves through the environment. Right. So you and I move through it one way. Humans move through it one way. Worms move through it another way and birds another. We all live on Earth. Right. We all inhabit the same environment, but we experience it in different ways. My, my umfelt has changed since this happened. The way I move through Earth, planet Earth, is not the same way I moved through it 12 years ago. Not at all. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't get in the way. You know, and you it's almost like somebody said to me once, they said, isn't upside vision redundant? And I'm like, you could say, sure, because up a sight and vision. Right. But I was like, yeah, I was like, that's a good paying attention. But it also it's almost like sight on top of my sight. That's why right. I did. It was thoughtful. I thought about it. I was like, OK, plus it's vision. You're seeing something else. You know, you're seeing you're seeing extra. So I, I, I was OK with that. And in fact, that was part of the, the reason I said upside vision Um, in any case. So, yeah, the way I move through the world has changed. And it's now it's it's like all this stuff. And I've made it my mission to figure out what's going on. And it's funny, if I was born with this, I wouldn't have been so, you know, I mean, again, I'm not. But I could see the difference before. Anybody that had any kind of curiosity and a drive to act on it, on it if this happened to them, they would do the same thing. And in fact, people have emailed me every every time. I do an interview, I get an email, somebody saying, oh my gosh, I have something like this, but I'm afraid to talk about it because people think I'm crazy. People think something's wrong with me, so I'm afraid to talk about it. So people will reach out to me more than likely about this. And I have a, a Facebook page, Upside Vision. It's kind of a support group. There's not a lot of us on it because a lot of people don't have this. Um, or even if they do have it, they don't want to join the group. They just, you know, they're like, okay, they make I make them feel better because they know they're not, there's not, not something wrong.
I've also heard you say that now you you were you're 11 years sober, so you're you're a runner. You work yeah. out frequently, so you're in pretty good physical shape. And does that make it easier to do this? Or let's say you're tired or you've come down with a cold or something. Does that make it more difficult to do this? Or is it just always present? You can always call it at will, no issue. Definitely having a uh, good physical help helps with it. And it, gra it grounds me. So I equate it, you know, I equate it. But it's funny because the time, so when I go to bed at night, shut my eyes and there's something playing. So, so since I can influence, uh, I'll say, okay, just let me have, let me pretend I'm by the river or a brook and have the running water and I'll watch it drift off to sleep or the side of an ocean. For some reason, late in the afternoon, three or five o'clock, it seems to tweak up a little bit. You know, it seems to be a little bit more, I don't know what the word, I don't know if I want to say stronger. It just seems to be maybe more detailed or more comes at me a little harder. Now, I will say this, when I wake up in the morning, Right. When I first wake up and I become conscious, it takes a minute for this to wake up too. Right. Hmm. I do not wake up to an image. I wake up um, unless it's dream. Sometimes I'll wake up to that, you know. But to, typically in the morning, when I wake up, I was like, okay. And it takes a few minutes for something to come. Now, obviously, there's something that's there's some piece of that that should be studied at some point. But I find that interesting. You know, it sleeps too. There, even though I say it's always there, like when I am in a deep sleep or at some point it is turned off, or at least maybe if it's not turned off, I'm not tuned into it. That's probably a better way to say it. Well, you've also mentioned that you have unwanted images at times. And when you have those unwanted images, are you already logged in or turned on and that pops in? Or does it just intrude into your life all of a sudden? Wow, I've seen this unpleasant image that I didn't want to see. That's it's that case. It's literally like if wow. I turn over, you see something and you see something horrible, like a body or anything like that. Now, and, and you wonder why, too. Right. I, so you just all you have to do is not pay attention to it. It's it's like scrolling through the Internet. Right. If you see a picture, you know, how you have warnings on social media. Don't click on this. I don't have a warning, but when I see it, I'll look away. Now, that's happened less and less. I don't know why, but it's happened less and less. So that's, but yeah, they're, they're definitely unwelcome images, but the majority are benign or definitely wanted and intriguing. And when I first had this ability, now maybe this was just to deal with my kind of PTSD of coming out of this, you know, because it took me a while to get my family together. And remember I was homeless. I, I emptied my bank account. I went through this horrible thing a strained relationship with my kids. So I kind of, kind of sat on the couch for a year as I connected with my family and happy ending that story. My kids are grown men. Now we're connected and it's, it's, it's a blessing. And my wife and I are together, but I became obsessed with math, right. And mathematics. Yes. And these equations would come to me as I was obsessed with them and I would have to solve them. And they were associated with images and when i when i solved it a harder part would come it was almost like the gamification you know how when you you have to go red you know yellow green you're done it was almost like that and if five years ago i finally have this completely built multi-dimensional coordinate system that i could with the right team put into a software and i i mean i hope to do that at some point but it's wild how that that is you talk about not having an intelligence something made something guided me to create that i'm telling you right now some some extraordinary intelligence helped me build this let's go there now because i mean we're kind of halfway through and so <laughs> now we can go there because a lot of people are going to want to know about this first of all well uh, did you have any interest really in mathematics before this no just just as a business owner that had to deal with math as a, you that know, kind of math like, that's exactly it survival math yeah. that's it no algebra no calculus next question so in 2012 when you were at the things are getting pretty bad and you were sequestered in a hotel room. I think you said in St. John's or something. Yeah. And at this point, and I will, I'll be honest here. I, uh, I've been doing these kind of podcasts for a long time and I used to smoke too much pot. And at that point I got really paranoid and I was imagining all these terrible things. So I, I don't smoke anymore. And I know a lot of people are like, Parker, weed, come on. But no, that was just my experience. I, every day I was reading the things that we read in this world and it got very freaky for me. 
So when you were in St. John's, you kind of got into this paranoid state. You're kind of sequestered in your room. You think ET or NHI is conversing with you. I think you take it as far as your Richard Dreyfus moment. You're rebuilding like the galaxy or something in your room. Explain that. And did you have any interest in the UFO issue before this happened? Okay, so now when every what we're talking about now, I was definitely using. So let's yeah. be clear: unreliable yes, yes. narrator, yes. unreliable narrator. Yeah. Okay, so I am on St. John's. I am away from the family. I'm in a nice hotel, and I get high every day, get drugs every day, drink every day, everything. Mm -hmm. Now while I'm in there, and I have no. Oh, by the way, I have no access to anything. All I have is my my iPod, and I have music in twenty four seven, and I have a certain amount of songs I downloaded on Apple iTunes. That is it. For whatever reason, this is back a dozen years. I couldn't get I couldn't get cell service out, so yeah. I was really alone. Now, and there's a picture. If you have this picture, you should put it up while I'm talking. Oh, I'm going to put it up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I built by the direction of these non human intelligence or whatever was coming into my brain basically their star system or whatever i used anything i could get my hands on from ropes to strings to my clothes i would buy notebooks and i would draw on them i would hang jewelry and my my fan was a fulcrum in this hotel room and all these things were hanging out and i would move the jewelry up i would move this belt buckle down that would be represent a, a, a planet it was absolutely psychotic and the hotel staff were like stay out of this man's room <laughs> he's nice right. He's yeah. nice, but he's really strange. Yeah. So yes, they, again, they told me to build this, whatever. I got messages. I had thoughts. This was before, before I had upside too. Let's be clear before I, this is just like these thoughts came to me and I felt like I was being nudged. I say in the book on the way over in that, on the boat ride over, I got a message. You're never going to leave this Island alive. And I just resided myself that I was going to die on the Island that never, uh, clearly that didn't happen, but that was, well, that was like a telepathy moment, right? That was like, why would I have that thought? And again, I do a really a specific detail of why I was psychotic and why I thought delusional thoughts. I, I, I lay this out in the book about how I think it happened because it was important for me to figure out how I would have a thought, I would take action on it, and then even if it was absurd, right? A thought, better said, a thought, I would have a belief that it was true, and then I would take action. I mean, I left my business because I thought my business was a front for an illegal operation. So I was like, okay, it's not really my business. That mm -hmm. was, there was no doubt that I was definitely psychotic. I, so that's why I checked myself into the psych ward in California. But Come to find out, you take out the drugs, the psychosis goes away. Who knew, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, well, obviously. Well, the reason that I'm asking you is because after you get your life back and you're realizing now you have this ability and you're searching for answers and you're trying to figure all of this out, you explain that you reach out to academics and the scientific community because you're trying to find the answers. They don't really know what to do with you. Luckily, you run into Dean Radin. But in my mind, when I'm hearing all this, well, of course, they didn't really know what to do with you. And the fact that those entities were in your mind in that state, whether they were real or not, well, now that you've got upside, you are seeing them. So tell the audience about that, because to me, these things are linked whether they were real or not i can't help but draw the conclusion that they must have been so yeah so this is a good pivot so people talk about being abducted right yeah. i was never abducted by aliens and and you also talk about um, owning your own addiction right so i i'm a drug i take responsible responsibility for your actions if i want to look back on that time i could make a really strong case that i was prodded and coerced to move away from the family so they could do things. So maybe we, it wasn't an abduction, it's not, and I can't prove this, but maybe it was like a gentler nudge, not it was gentle at the time, it was horrible, but it was like a less invasive nudge because for whatever reason, I, again, I don't know, I'm still in the process of trying to figure this out. So, you know, I could make that case, but let's talk about now without the drugs, right? Let's talk about now without the drugs and let's talk a minute about remote viewing. Right. Yes. If somebody is listening and they're a remote viewer, have experience with the definition of remote viewing. Remote viewing is something the government came up with so they could find a target at a different location 
and you would get an envelope and you'd have to figure out what was in the envelope because that was the target, okay? So you'd picture, you know, like I see I see tall lines and I see a circle at the bottom and a point at the top, you know, and it was at the Eiffel Tower. We'll use that reference again. I th So the point of remote viewing, what I'm getting at is you have to pass a test. That's the definition of remote viewing. When I, I have a more generous view, a, a more expansive view. Sure, that's remote viewing, but I'm clearly seeing the Eiffel Tower right? I am viewing it. I can see people walking around the bottom of it. Maybe I'm not going to pass a remote viewing test as we know it, but I'm definitely seeing something at a distance. Maybe the best way to say it is like this. Remote viewing is hitting the D note, right? Specifically, how what, you have to pass the test, hit the D note. Remote viewing, how I see it, is singing. I'm going to see all these things. Maybe I'm not going to hit the Dino because I can't or whatever, what you want me to do, but there's something going on here that is outside of me, far away that I'm doing now, that I'm seeing, I should say. But again, back to the point, as I said earlier, it may not be the Eiffel Tower at this moment. It may have been the Eiffel Tower from 40 years ago. It may be an Eiffel Tower in 10 years in the future. It may be a parallel universal Eiffel Tower. It may just be some projection of an Eiffel Tower from a movie that never happened. There's so many possibilities that we need to explore. But Tom, you've seen <laughs> what we call extraterrestrials in HI okay. in these visions. Okay. And they you have interacted that. with you. Okay. Let's talk about that. So this, so when I, this, so this, this is a setup for that though. This right. is a setup I know. for that. Okay. So when I first started doing this, I didn't even know it was called remote viewing. I would sit on the couch and just watch these images go by, right? I would engage them. I would see some things. They would be some benign, some inane, some ridiculous things. Every once in a while, I see something what is extraordinary. One of the times I, I'm out there, and, and maybe we can even call this astral projection because it was way out there, mm -hmm. but it can't be just astral projection because I'm going to describe what happened. So I stumble upon this ship that is filled with gray aliens, right? A dozen of them. They're standing in a circle. They're standing in around what appears to be an empty glass table. And I'm watching them. And again, remember, this is holographic. Again, I want to be clear on that. This is holographic. So I'm watching them. I'm like, what are they looking at? Why are they staring at a great, you know, empty table? As I got closer, I realized they're remote viewing, or this is what I call it, a town right? They're seeing a holographic town and their eyes are on the people, right? And, and they're in a circle. So, and when the person left one gray's eye uh, field of view, it, the other gray would pick it up and either, I don't know if say if they were moving it along or they were following it, but there was definitely a cohesive orchestration of events. And it was like they were working in a chorus. It's like they all knew their job and what it had to be. And I don't know if they were influencing or remote viewing or just remote viewing or what they were doing, but I'm sitting there watching it. And let's be clear, this is less than a minute. This has just happened like maybe a minute. And I'm watching and I'm wondering, of course, what they're doing. And then two, two of the grays look at me, right? And I'm like, oh, can they see me, right? Well, this has happened. And I'm like, and then they start coming towards me. And boom, I jump out because I was freaking scared. I mean, I was like, what's happening? So that was one of my very first experiences with the grays. And and yeah, that there's a great illustration about that too. And since then, they would jump in and annoy me while I'm trying to work on math. They're like more of a nuisance. From my perspective, they are some kind of nuisance. And they're certainly a nuisance to me, or they have been. I have one okay encounter with them, but from the most part, they have been an annoyance to me. Remind me the term that you use. It's it's the something biosphere. You had a term for it. A hidden biosphere. Okay. My point is, the reason I bring that up is because if you had had one or two of these situations or visions, uh, we could all kind of uh, shrug it off perhaps. But you have seen various entities of different types, and this to me ties into this hidden biosphere, if this is in fact what you think it is, and this is reproducible with other people who would have these skills, then you perhaps you are seeing things that are existing in our same space and other dimensions for lack of a better way to explain it. I'm just a layman. But that's what I think of when I hear you say hidden biosphere, that these beings are actually there coexisting on some other timeline or dimensional plane. 
Well, I, you know, it's funny because I, 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 I've talked about this so much, and the more you talk about it, the more you think about it. I don't think it's extra dimension, and I don't think it's another another um, parallel. I think it is our. That's why I say hidden biosphere. I think it's here now. If I went back to ions and we hooked me up to an EMG machine, an EEG machine for for the simplest test we could do, and when I was hooked up. A, a, gray, a couple of times the gray showed up while I was doing this test and I had to will to ignore it because it would mess with the results. That's why we did 200. You know, there's some, obviously some, maybe that didn't work or, or whatever that were less, less good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In any case, if there was an, if we were saying, okay, let's see what happens with the EG waves when these beings show up, we could measure that. We could absolutely, every time I do this, it not every time, many times I do it, it, they show up. Now, there's something called CE5 where you try to contact UFOs. I could, I don't, I could, it, they come all the time and that's just grays. There's mantas, there's all these other beings that show up. And I liken it to walking into a jungle, right? If a human walks into our jungle, there are so many things in there that are looking at us that could kill us or that are not interested in us or ignore us. But there might be a panther in there, right? That is like, hey, that's dinner. This is like that. And once they know you can see them, it's 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 different. That's why there's something called a hitchhiker effect, yes. where you people have gone to Skinwalker Ranch and these beings know they can see them and they may hitchhike and go back to their to follow them back to their apartment or home. And now people will mock that and say that's nonsense. You you say whatever you want. It makes complete sense to me. It makes absolute sense to me. What it makes me think of because I've done a lot of this type of content, and paranormal and 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 work with psychics the whole line. I don't have an I don't have a Ouija board, and there's not going to be a Ouija board in my house because I just don't need that in my business, man. It's like I'm not opening up the door for anybody. I just can't go there. But one another thing that interests me about this, and I, maybe you've been asked this before, but okay, let's say the straight media, straight academics, and straight science guys, they're like, we're not going to touch Tom because that's that's just way out of what we deal with. But on the other hand, and I don't want to put any ideas out there, but it did cross my mind, so I'm sure it's crossed somebody else's. Let's say I'm some spook with an intelligence agency or the military industrial complex. I might want to talk to Tom to figure out, well, you know, I don't know what we can do with this, but I would certainly want to study you to try to figure out, is there something we could do with this? Has anyone contacted you in that way or do you think you've been contacted no that's a that is actually a great question believe it or not michael you're the first person to ask it on a on an interview that's just where i go i'm i'm no always, no and i do too. I always think the so, worst so well let, let, let's talk about the whole first of all let's talk a couple of things here first of all i took a a, a ufo studies class with dr diane pasolka she studies religion yes. UFO. yeah uh, i took it two years ago and i said listen you're an expert on this have you ever found somebody that had upside in your past or have you ever heard of it right are there any historical records from 500 anything and the answer is no and not only that i found nothing not only that every time i get on the podcast that i remember i say send it to me there's nothing like this in the historical records at least that they are talking about right so that's number one number two from a remote viewing perspective and seeing things so there is a survival we talk about evolutionary survival piece to this so I, of course, you try to remote view. Let's talk about this. What would be dangerous for me to see? Epstein killing himself. Wink, wink, right? I can't see that. I cannot see it. It will not let me see it. It will put up a haze. I think that's self-protective. Mm -hmm. I cannot see Area 51. Not because it puts up a haze. It has two guard dogs, two Dobermans, and it's this like guard standing in front of the door. And it may, and I just, I turn away. Now, maybe I could push past that, but I feel that would be as stupid as putting my yes. hand closer to a stove. I don't want to play that game. I don't want to play that game. So there is a survival element to it. And I don't want to push that. And I don't think there's a need to push it. But there's certainly, and no one has reached out to me. To answer the question, no one has reached out to me yet. And I'm a little bit surprised. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm like, for two reasons. One, they they are they have people that can do this. But I actually, I think if they did, I would pick them up and know it, right? Mm. And I haven't seen that. That's not entirely true, but it's kind of mostly true. And number two, they just they just don't care. They, they've got other things that are so much more advanced or whatever. But no, no one has come to me yet. And again, I know that at this point they have to know I exist. 
right? I mean, they have to. I've right. done enough podcasts. I've talked about it enough. Yeah, so <laughs> nobody's come to me yet. Well, actually, I'm kind of relieved to hear that because I like you and I don't want anybody being troubled by nefarious issues these days just for living their life and having an ability that you didn't really have. You didn't have a choice in this. You just have it. Exactly. Well, I think, listen, the, listen, there's a, I, I wrote a, a paper on Medium said, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically that the dark matter revolution is coming and it's going to make AI look like a middle school science project. So everyone talks, about, and this is before AGI from two years ago. I wrote it in 2021. So, mm -hmm. but the AI element is really cool and interesting, but this, whatever I'm seeing, there's an intelligence so much more advanced than AI. There are these knowledgeable things because this coordinate system that I have seen in my mind, there's nothing like it. Forget our Cartesian coordinate system. This blows that away. It's like, it's, it's so much more comp the system. And I'm not a mathematician. Let's be honest about that. The system is complex. The math that I do is pretty simple to get around it. But there is no topological space. There is no uh, any kind of image that I can't manifest, deconstruct, and manifold that I cannot deconstruct in my field of vision. Now that, there's something there that I want to build software-wise, as I said earlier. When you started having this obsession and deep interest in mathematics, like I was always terrible at math and I didn't really enjoy the subject. Some people are great at it and have a natural affinity for it. Did you have have a natural affinity for math or did you find that not only were you obsessed but it came easier for you to work within math yeah, yeah definitely doing all the homework and reading about it and not only the math the mathematician the history of math and how ideas are accepted and let's be clear if i wrote a mathematical paper and i submitted it they would not pay attention because you need to have a history. You need to be you need to be in, an insider. And I get that. You know, even insiders, even fellow academics, you don't accept necessarily accept other mathematical ideas. You know, mm -hmm. there's a famous example of Kronecker and a George. Uh, I can't think of his last name. He came up with the uh, left numbers and, and he was not accepted in his lifetime. Uh, but come to find out, he was definitely on to the right thing. So and not only that, mental illness around a beautiful mind. John Nash, right? Now, I'm not, again, I'm undergraduate math. I'm not a mathematician, but there's something going on that is like next level with this visuospatial element. Next it's level. funny that you mentioned A Beautiful Mind because that was actually going through my head just a few minutes ago at one point during our conversation. It sounds a bit like that. I think we've got about 10 minutes or so left and I don't want to miss anything. And I had pages upon pages of questions I wanted to ask you, but it does sound to me like whatever this is, it feels like a personalized and this is pure speculation, but it feels like a personalized protective thing that you had because you can't use it to make money necessarily. You can't pick horses or, or lottery numbers and you can't see things that might potentially hurt you either. So it feels like that this is some form of an extension of a sensory experience that a human can have that offers them insight into being able to protect themselves. You listen, Michael, that is the best description I've heard. And that's what I've lived with. No, seriously, it's like, it's it's a sixth sense or it's an additional sense. Now, remember, we're talking about the visual part of it, but it also, I have this, when I, I'm like, should I do this? Sometimes I'll get a feeling to know to do this thing, right? I'll know this is the right choice. So that, so that's, that is like an additional thing about upside. And sometimes like a thought will enter my head that it's like, okay, this is, this is the move or even like, don't do that. Like turn left instead of right. So I do believe that's it. I do believe it. I, uh, that is, is some kind of evolutionary step. And the question is, why did I develop it? Why are people, and I do think it's not just me. Why are we developing it? And, and I do think something is going on on our planet, whether you want to call it climate change, whether you want to call it something is happening. All these, all these uh, billionaires are making bunkers because what does the government know maybe that aliens right. are coming? And I know people will roll their eyes at that. But look, they knew COVID was happening before COVID happened. And that's not a conspiracy. People bought stocks because four months they knew... Some some crap right. was happening. Maybe right. somebody is de doing something. Again, I know nothing. I have no connections to the government at all. I don't know any of that. And I think that's kind of good too. Yeah, because these sure. are all just things I can talk about and I have no insider knowledge. The insider, you want to know the insider knowledge I have? Think about that. I have 12 years of communicating and 
with these NHIs or seeing them, maybe they don't want to say communicating. People call themselves star seeds and say they get messages from that. That's not my story at all. My story is seeing these things, seeing these holographic images in this hidden biosphere and learning and thinking about that. And there's think about it. I've got 12 years of knowledge that we can't even touch on here. And some of it I know is important. Some of it is a little bit concerning, you know, but again, some of it, it's a lie. They lie. It's lies too. It's a trickster element. There's a trickster element. That part is concerning. And another thing that I think about, I think you've touched about it in an episode or two of your other interviews is, but let's say that there are people out there right now that have the abilities that you have, but have been misdiagnosed as being schizophrenic or having a severe mental illness. Um, and they don't even know that they're not mentally ill, but they actually have an additional ability. So I don't want to not diagnose anybody. I've thought about this a lot. You know, the schizo effective piece about seeing things. Yeah. But if somebody, you know, and you give drugs to somebody, you know, it, it, it will calm their mind. It, they do it to calm their mind. There's no doubt there might be a piece of that. But I, I, I am not a doctor, so right. I don't know. I don't want to say anything about that. Now, I will say this. People, there's something called uh, Charles Binet syndrome. When it's macular degeneration. When somebody's going, going blind, sometimes they'll start hallucinating and seeing kind of what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. these little men. I think that's the brain screaming, hey, listen, our, your eyes are going blind, but there's something. there's another way we can see. And some of those, most a lot of people are those people are given prescriptions to to calm their mind because they think they're going crazy. Some people don't need that, and they just deal with these images that they know they can play with. They're blind in any sense of the word, but they still engage with these images. Um, uh, and I talk well, about I, the paper. Well, I hope that I didn't misstate what I meant because what what I was trying to say is. What if there are other people out there that have the abilities that you have, but unfortunately they think it's a mental illness or they're seeing a doctor who's telling them that you're mentally ill? Okay. So yeah, for, for that case, a, a woman reached out to me and it, people, like I said, people reach out to me all the time. I had a Zoom call with this woman. She described it pretty much like mine and I want to meet her. And she said, she's had it for as many years. She had it because of trauma, right? Her mother told her, don't tell anyone because you're going to think you're crazy. But she's been living with it for years. I think if we, again, we are in the same room, I think we'd be able to communicate like that. And one other thing, I know we've only got a few minutes left, but let's talk about the communication element as it relates to psilocybin and DMT. Yes. I want to do an experiment where I am the control. And I am in a room with five or six men and women that are on DMT, whatever, whatever, whatever hallucinogenic drug we want to call it, they want to use. Th there is something called group hallucinations, right? Mm -hmm. These all these guys or women, they're like, wow, did you see that? We just communicated with the machine elves. Everyone comes down and they dismiss it, or like, how could we have all seen the same thing? You can't reproduce it because it's not under scientific observation. And they know there's something there, but it's, it's not taken seriously. There are many anecdotes about that. What happens if I'm in a room under scientific observation with these people? What if we're all tuned into the same frequency? What if they're at the same level I am and we can see it? It's like we're all dialed in at that same radio station, picking up the same waves, seeing the same thing. Again, now it's a game changer, right? Now you've now you've got data. You're like, okay, well, how? Because nobody wants to be on on mushrooms all the time. That's mm -hmm. Terrence McKenna's like, look, a couple of times a year is enough. That's exhausting. Right. But what if you could get to that state without that, right? What if now we know the exact brain state you're in to tune in to this hidden biosphere that's everywhere around us? And it's interesting to me because when you have these this this holographic vision. The way you describe it to me, it's you actually see it, but it's not you're not in a hallucinogen, you're not in a psychedelic no, state. No. You're in a completely lucid state. Yeah. It's like a conversation with it's a conversation with these waves. I engage with them physiological, just like my ears hear it or my eyes see it. Well, conversation. I'm listening to you talk, I'm responding with my voice. My eyes see it, but my response is also with my eyes or my brain. You know, that's that's where we are now. It's that simple. There's no way we can go deeper than that right now because I, I'm going to put the links um, in the description for the podcast and the videos to all of your stuff. But my final question, I guess, what I know that you are searching for more people who may have this. And if you find them, what are you going to maybe advise them to do and what lies next for you in the future? 
Well, if, again, bigger data set, right? Maybe maybe get back to ions with more people to reproduce this, maybe reproduce it somewhere else, right? And maybe do other tests. That was just one test. That was one control test yeah. about mind's eye, memory recall, and upside. And we did that to show that the brain state was different. It's kind of the first step to let people know this is not you know, a mental illness. It's not an imagination. It's a great ground floor to get in on. So more testing, more people, bigger data set. But again, I actually think we can communicate communicate like this because I'm communicating with something. So if I could communicate very simply, if I can communicate with a freaking alien, whatever this is, then two people can communicate with each other if we have the ability. I mean, I, that's really basically it. I feel that might be the case. Might. We're certainly easy to test if somebody else has upside. Very easy to test. Tom, I've been doing this a long time and I've covered a lot of stories and I think I keep my ear to the ground pretty well. And I swear up until about two weeks ago, I had never heard of this. So this has been a really enjoyable subject for me to broach. And I thank you for your time today. And man, if you come to LA, we got to go to lunch or something. Definitely. So yeah. Um, yeah. anything else you want to tell the audience before we sign off or? No, if you think you have it, go to the Facebook page, Upside Vision, you know, and just leave a comment. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's T-O-M-E-M-A-T-T-E. -E. I'm sure you'll put the links, I would imagine, yes, anyway. Yes, But that's it. But yeah, thanks for having me on, Michael. This has been a pleasure. It has been really fun. And ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy what we're doing here, you know what? Man, reach over, press that like button, subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel, subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast platform you're listening to because I'm on all of them. So that would really help me out a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time. I thank Tom for coming on. And until next time, keep your heart and your mind open. Peace.